Hello everyone and welcome to A Fictional Escapist. Today's video serves as the first book haul on the channel. Uh, we're going to be doing one of these every month, probably around mid-month just with COVID and whatnot. Some of the shipping times take a little bit longer and we're going to go through the books that I bought in January today. Um, now, like everyone at the beginning of the year, a lot of book lovers out there, we tell ourselves in our New Year's resolutions that we are in fact going to just read the books that we own, and then three days later realise that we are lying to ourselves. So I made that goal, and I thought I was going really well. Um, I did a panic pre-order of a couple of things at the end of December, just to get that dopamine hit for buying books and to make sure that I was still having new books coming throughout the year for some anticipated releases that I have. And um, yeah, uh, on January, I think it was January 10th, I made it 10 days until I bought my first book. And then I thought, you know what? They're only eBooks, they're only a couple of dollars each. It's fine, doesn't, doesn't count, doesn't count, it's not a physical book. Anyway, I bought 17 books in January and realized that uh, that is a goal that I'm never gonna be able to keep because I like books, I like buying them. I thought maybe if I bought them and read them within that month that it would be okay. And uh, I can't read 17 books per month, so I don't know if you can, that's, that's very impressive. So with this book haul, I am gonna start with the ones that I've already read. Um, a lot of these will be eBooks. I do have a stack next to me on my left hand side, which I don't know if you can see, I don't think you can. And we're gonna go through them, but I am gonna start with the ones that I have already read. So, jumping into the books, I purchased in January. Number one was Man Fuck This House by Brian Asman. I'm not gonna talk about it too much. Uh, watch my wrap up if you want to, I'll link it up the top. It was about a house possession, it's tropey as heck. And um, the house just wants a really good clean. So I think that was the moral of the story there. I personally didn't like it that much. Next up we have Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. This is a magical realism book, it's set in a cafe in Japan and basically if you go into this cafe there's a seat and if you follow a whole bunch of rules you can travel through time for a certain period of time. And it sort of looks at the question what would you do if you could travel back through time to for a moment even if it didn't change anything. The next one that I bought and read in January was Kim Yi Jong, born 1982, by Cho Nam Ju. Now, the more I think about this book, the more I think of how important it is. This is sort of a character study, and it goes through a chronological view of this young woman's life as she goes through childhood into adulthood and motherhood and, and all those things. And it really looks at how girls and women were treated or are treated in Korea and sort of those societal expectations that are placed upon them and just how unfair and, you know, how much of a disadvantage that women are um, within the society. And it's stuff that we're still seeing today. So yeah, the more I think about it, the more important this book is. I, I really do encourage a lot of people to read it as a perspective, not only from another, you know, another country, but it is stuff that we're seeing in Western societies as well, that we still just sort of accept, um, which is not good, and we need to not be doing that. The next one that I bought was an audiobook. It was Chapter House Dune by Frank Herbert, book six in the Dune series. I already owned the physical book, but I had listened to the last three via audio, so I purchased the audiobook, and that was sort of a, I guess, a deeper dive into the politics of the Honored Martres and the Bene Gesserit, um, which was really the, the focus of that story for me, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, you would have heard that in my wrap-up as well. So the next one that I have for you, I am currently reading it, um, and that is my indie pick of February, and it got released on the 25th of January 2022, and that is The Heart of the Bloodstone by Felina Wood. I'll pop that one close to the camera. How good is that cover? I can't get over it. I'm not going to shut up about it, and I'm not sorry for it. So we follow Avalon. Uh, I believe it's actually a multi-POV. Uh, I've only read a few pages at the moment. So uh, multi-POV adventure story. We're following Avalon, and as he sort of tries to get a group of people together to overthrow this tyrannical chief um, that they have where they are. And uh, like I said, I haven't read a whole bunch of it yet. The magic system in this is really cool. It's to do with the birthstones, and each birthstone has sort of, I guess, different aspects that it gives to the people, um, whatever their birthstone may be. So I do, so Felina uh, did recommend reading her short story, The Goat Game, which you can, before reading this one, which you can get for free off her website, and I will link that one down below. So that is the first physical purchase of January.
Jumping into books that I have not read yet, um, I am going to start with two non-fiction. One of them is an ebook, which is The Girl with Seven Names, a North Korean de facto's story uh, by, I'm sorry if I pronounce this incorrectly, uh, Hyun Soo Lee's story. This is a woman who uh, decided at 17 that she was going to escape North Korea and get out from under the dictatorship that is happening in the country and as she escaped she didn't realize it would be 12 years before she got to see her family again so she moves into China uh, and basically learns the language learns the culture and then 12 years later goes back to the border of North Korea to try and help her family escape into South Korea now I don't know too much more than that um, it's a part of me wanting to read more memoirs about extraordinary people particularly extraordinary women and this one was on my radar from Elliot Brooks's channel uh, as one of her books that she wanted to read this year um, any channels that I mention or any Instagrams that I mention I will link down below if you want to check them out the next non-fiction that I bought was a physical book, and that is Emily Radajkowski's My Body. This is a collection of essays. Um, one of the most important reads that I had last year was Brave by Rose McGowan. It's a book that it sits with me almost daily, and I think about it almost daily. So in that vein, I wanted to pick up um, some more, I guess, uh, feminist books from people in industries such as Hollywood. So for those of you who don't know, Emily Radajkowski uh, is a model and an actress and I believe she became a model at a very very young age and has sort of gone through a lot of her adult life in the limelight. But um, I am going to read a little bit of description so I do apologize if my head is down here, that's just where my computer is and where I've written all my notes. So it says, My body is a collection of essays that explores feminism, sexuality and power of men's treatment of women and women's rationalization for accepting that treatment. Um, so I am very very keen to jump into this one. As a transgender man it's very very important to me to continue reading feminist works, um, particularly by people in limelight as well as other transgender people, just to make sure that I check my privilege. Uh, so the next one I bought is a literature fiction, contemporary fiction, I'm not sure, uh, and that is To Paradise by Hanya Yanagihara. I know virtually nothing about this. I know people love A Little Life and that's been popping up a lot and uh, this was the new one that came out this year and we're following three different perspectives from three different timelines. Um, sort of like I guess an alternate history if things were different but other than that I honestly don't know too much about it but that is To Paradise by Hanya Yanagihara. Moving on to the fiction that I have bought. We've got two. Uh, one's a dystopian and then one is a sci-fi and then we'll move on to the fantasy from there. So the dystopian uh, book that I have bought is Earthly Bodies by Susan Earlham. This is uh, described as an eco-dystopian uh, book. Um, so it says a dystopian eco-horror story that spans the ages where strangers reveal their contribution to an extraordinary act of survival. Harmony with nature is everyone's wish. It's time to be careful what you wish for. I don't know too much more than that. I'm a sucker for a black background with some florals and I think that's beautiful. Um, but also eco-horror uh, is a genre or a sub-genre of horror that I would really, really like to get into. Um, this is fairly short. Uh, the pages are, the words are quite spread out and it's about 300. And 70 pages so I'm hoping to get to that one soon actually as just a bit of a, a fill-in for the fantasy. The next one up on my list is The Seat by Channa Porter uh, and again it's a black backdrop with some florals uh, another short one. This one is a sci-fi uh, I believe and I'm not a huge sci-fi reader but this one sort of caught my attention. It says, the seep is an alien entity which has invaded the planet. Through the seep, everything is connected. Capitalism falls, hierarchies and barriers are broken down, and if something can be imagined, it is possible. So I believe we're following Trina, uh, and so the, the back says, Trina and her wife, Deba, live blissfully under the seep's utopian influence until Deba begins to imagine what it might be like to be reborn as a baby, which will give her the chance at an even better life. Using seep tech, Seep tech to make this dream a reality, Diva moves on to a new existence, leaving Trina devastated. So the Seep, this alien identity, basically lets people do what they want. If you can think about it, you can do it. So Diva has decided that she wants to be reborn and see what her life would be like. 
in, in a different time. Um, and I think it's about, don't quote me on this, I haven't read the entire back, um, Trina sort of dealing with that, that fallout and maybe even trying to take on this alien identity. I don't know, it sounded very cool, so uh, I am hoping to get to that one soon as well. The rest of this book haul is all fantasy, um, so I'm just going to jump in. There are a couple of ebooks that I have purchased here that I am going to have to read off the screen, uh, so again, I apologize for looking down. The first is A Testament of Steel by Davis Ashura, book one in the Instrument of Omens trilogy. A young man with no past must progress into a warrior out of legend. Cindershade's life begins on a fateful afternoon at the bottom of a well where he awakens. Bruce battered and barefoot of all memory, his only understanding is, is a driving imperative to protect those who can't defend themselves and become a warrior worthy of the name. This I believe is a self-pub book, um, I picked it up quite cheaply on Kindle, I follow Davis on Instagram and am very interested in this particular series and I'll link in down below, uh, so I'm looking forward to jumping into that one, I'm not quite sure when. The next one I picked up, again these are in the wrong order, I apologise, is You've heard about it before, I don't need to talk about it. It's Norse-inspired fantasy. I've never read anything by John Gwynn. I own the Faithful and the Fallen series, and my father-in-law is reading books two to four at the moment. He's got them in his house. I dropped a whole bunch of books over there when he got COVID uh, and just said, go nuts. So I am I'm on the fence about whether to start with Shadow of the Gods or whether to start with Faithful and the Fallen. Maybe you guys can let me know down below. I have heard that the Faithful and the Fallen for some people can take a little while to get into. Some people don't like it, but they really like this, so I don't know where to start. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. This isn't on my radar for this year, to be completely honest. Maybe Faithful and Fallen uh, at sort of towards the end of the year to carry on over into 2023, but I'm not sure. Next up, we have The Autumn Republic by Brian McClellan. Uh, this is book three in the Powder Mage trilogy. I've not read any of the Powder Mage trilogy. If I'm being completely honest, I thought this book sounded like it was up my father-in-law's alley. Um, so when I met my father-in-law, he has bookshelves and bookshelves and bookshelves of uh, a lot of the classic fantasies. And I made it my life's mission to basically uh, make him branch out and read some different authors. So I've been fairly successful so far. Uh, at the moment, he's got Brian Stavely, Anthony Ryan, and uh, John Gwynn, uh, that Faithful in the Fallen series that I just mentioned, and this one is probably the next series that I'm going to get him to try. He likes that military fantasy. That flintlock fantasy is not too much of a throw from uh, military fantasy, I guess, so um, I'm hoping that he likes this one. I know nothing about it, and I will probably read it after he finishes with it. I talk about my father-in-law a lot on this channel, just as a sidebar. Um, he is the only person in my life that reads as fast as me and likes fantasy as much as me. So if you hear me uh, say the name Papa Squall at any point, that just refers to him. If you played the early Final Fantasy games, then you'll know what I'm talking about and where the name came from. Jumping in to some other fantasy books that I'm most interested in reading and, and sort of jumping into, uh, we're going to start with Justin Call's Master of Sorrows. Now I blame such a bibliophile uh, on Instagram, and I'll link him down below for this book. Uh, it was hyped and he reads so quickly, but there was a few posts about this one and it, it definitely caught my eye. This is a coming of age story. The description says you've read this story before. It says, you've heard the story before of a young boy orphaned through tragic circumstances, raised by a wise old man who comes to a fuller knowledge of his magic and uses it to fight the great evil that threatens his world. But there's a twist. What if the good and the bad person were the same? So this is about our main character, I believe. Sorry, uh, this is also book one of the Silent Gods, I believe. It's another trilogy. A lot of fantasy trilogies exist. I automatically assume it's a trilogy unless told otherwise. So, but if the boy hero and the malevolent threatening, uh, <laughs> malevolent threatening taint were one and the same, what if the boy slowly came to realize he was the reincarnation of an evil god? Would he save the world or would he destroy it? Uh, that sounds cool, so I'm looking forward to jumping into The Master of Sorrows. I believe book two out is out as well. I'm not sure about when book three is coming out, but I don't believe it is here yet. 
Next one on the list is The Mask of Mirrors by M. A. Carrick. I honestly, this has been in my book cart uh, for online book shopping for a long time, many different times, just because of the cover. This is book one in the Rook and Rose trilogy, and it says, Fortune favours the bold, magic favours the liars. Um, I've heard a few people talk about this one. Uh, I, I love the cover. I don't know too much about it. I don't want to know too much about it. That premise is enough for me. Just reading the back, it says, Ren is a con artist who has come to the sparkling city of Nadzra with one goal, to trick her way into a noble house, securing her fortune and her sister's future. But her masquerade is just one of many, and as corrupt nightmare magic begins to weave its way through the city of dreams, the poisonous feuds of its nobility and the shadow dangers of its impoverished underbelly become tangled, with Ren at its heart. That sounds pretty cool. I just noticed that the, uh, the square on the back is not symmetrical, and that hurts my Virgo brain, so I'm going to turn it to the front where it is symmetrical. Uh, the next one I don't actually own yet, uh, and that is because I ordered a particular edition of The Grace of Kings by Ken Liu. This is book one in the Dandelion Dynasty. I believe that trilogy is finishing up this year. Maybe there's four books. I think it's a trilogy, and it's ending this year. Um, so the they the original covers are black and it has like a one image on the front and they are stunning as well but a lot so much fantasy has the black backdrop and the new ones that are coming out are pastel colored and almost watercolor with pinks and and greens and it's just delightful i'll pop it up on the screen uh so yeah i've ordered that one i hope i like it and i can get the rest of the series it is one that i have not heard too much about i think uh, hillary from bookborn was talking about it not too long ago but it, it's sort of been on my radar before then, and then that's convinced me to, to buy it. So The Grace of Kings is an Asian-inspired fantasy following two people who become friends in the Rising Against the Emperor, and then end up on opposite sides once this emperor has been overthrown. Now, because these two people have very different views on how the world can be run, them being on opposing sides after being friends proves to be uh, problematic for their friendship. So I'm hoping that I really, really enjoy that one. Um, I don't know when I'm gonna get to any of these, to be honest, I have a pack schedule for 2022, but let's see, there are some that I definitely want to prioritize and try and fit in. The next one on the list, we've got two more. Thank you so much for bearing with me. We've got two more to go. And the first one of those is, I don't buy hardbacks very often. You'll hear me say that a lot, but Black Leopard, Red Wolf by Marlon James. I have heard such polarizing things about this book and this series, which is the Dark Star series. I believe, again, it's a trilogy. Um, people love or hate it. There is very little in between uh, in terms of Goodreads and even Storygraph uh, <laughs> um, reviews. It's like one star or five star, and then there's just nothing in the middle. So I have no idea where I'm going to land. I believe this is quite a complicated book because even though it's fantasy, it's also it had dabbles in a bunch of different genres, including historical fiction. Uh, so reading a description that I found, it says that drawing from African history and mythology and his own rich imagination, Marlon James has written an adventure that is that's also an ambitious, involving read, defying categorization and full of unforgettable characters. Black Leopard Red Wolf explores the fundamentals of truth, the limits of power, the excesses of ambition, and our need to understand them all. Uh, so it, it does, it also says, there's a quote on the back that says, this book begins like a fever dream and merges into the world upon world of deadly fairy tales rich with political magic. I'm really curious to see where I land on this. Um, I think, let's get Nike. Just for those of you who like to see what's under the, the dust jacket. The, um, the second book comes out later this year, it may even be later this month, and the, the cover for the sequel is just as stunning as that one. So I hope I like that one, because I won't buy the second one unless I do. You made it to the end, the last book that I have, that I know nothing about. I bought this book because the cover is both horrific and excellent. Um, it, I want you to look at this cover and tell me that it does not look like something you would check out of Blockbuster back in the 90s. And that is The Sky Is Yours by Chandler Clang Smith. Look at that. What is that? Um, that's a lot for the eyeball to take in. I know nothing about it, but when I picked up Black Leopard, Black Leopard Red Wolf, this was recommended next to it. And I was like, you know what? 
yes, I'll put that on my shelf, no worries. Um, so, just taking a quick look at the Goodreads description, it says, a sprawling genre-defying epic set in a dystopian metropolis plagued by dragons. This debut about what it's like to be young in a very old world is pure storytelling pleasure. So, I don't know. Let's look. Let's look at underneath. No, it's just black. It's fine. It's fine. The cover is what we're here about. Put that dust jacket back on. That's it. They are all the books I bought in January. How are you going with your New Year's book buying bans? Let me know below. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more of it, then subscribe if you want to, and I'll catch you in the next video. Ciao. Thank you.